6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Terence Howard, an Academy-winning actor, recently revealed a 6,000-year-old secret that captivated the minds of many. This enigma, hidden within the fabric of time, has piqued Howard's interest, and it is against what scientists want us to believe about the known universe. Howard also exposed a riddle that has been hidden in history for thousands of years, a problem that captivated great minds like da Vinci, Newton and Pythagoras. Even the best scientists of our current time have been forced to have a rethink. What is this 6,000-year-old secret? Should we trust the word of an actor over established science? Join us in this video as we reveal the 6,000-year-old secret Terence Howard talked about. Terence Dashen Howard, an American actor, was born on March 11, 1969. Howard's first major roles were in the 1995 films Dead Presidents and Mr. Holland's Opus. He broke into the mainstream with a series of television and film roles between 2004 and 2006. Terence Howard was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance in Hustle and Flow. He has appeared in numerous films, including Winnie Mandela, Crash, Four Brothers, Big Mama's House, Ray, Lackawanna Blues, Get Rich or Die Trying, Idle Wild, Biker Boys, August Rush, The Brave One, and Prisoners. Howard portrayed James Rhodey Rhodes in the first Iron Man movie. In a 2019 Emmy Awards interview, Terence Howard announced his profound love for science and philosophy. He claimed his ability to open up the flower of life properly and identify real wave conjugations as the basis for his decision. For 6,000 years, humans have been trying to interpret this one little object known as the flower of life. Have you seen this before? Are you aware that this is one of humanity's earliest emblems? The flower of life is a sacred geometry symbol used by many cultures and is thought to represent the fundamental shapes of space and time. It is widely recognized as the universe's blueprint, holding the foundation for the design of every atom, chemical structure, life form, and everything that exists. This symbol was discovered in Egypt's Temple of Osiris, where it had been molecularly scorched into the wall 6,000 years ago. The symbol is found all over the world and is of great spiritual and religious significance. Some of the locations where it can be found are the Golden Temple in Amritsa, the Temple of Osiris at Abydos, Egypt, ancient Chinese temples, the Louvre, Spain, Japan, Lebanon, the city of Ephesus, and many more. The Flower of Life can be seen beneath the paw of the Fu Dog or Shishi, the Guardian Lion in Beijing's Forbidden City, China. The Fu Dogs were a symbol of protection for the structures and their people. They were also considered guardians of knowledge. At first, the Flower of Life looks quite simple, but its design has a deeper meaning. The sign has 13 identically sized overlapping circles. A lot of people believe that knowing the Flower of Life will help us understand how the universe works. Religious geometry assigns symbolic and spiritual essence to specific geometric shapes and proportions. The Flower of Life implies that whoever controlled it ruled the entire universe. The genius da Vinci spent his entire life trying to uncover the secrets hidden within the Flower of Life. Newton devoted his whole life to uncovering the secrets hidden in the Flower of Life, the same truths that Pythagoras yearned to discover. This is a fascinating and inspiring look at the fundamental relationship between the universe's hidden geometrical order, natural geometry, and man-made geometry. Stephen Skinner, author of the book Sacred Geometry, writes, The Da Vinci Code has awoken the world to the powerful and very ancient idea that religious truths and mathematical principles are inextricably linked. Sacred geometry provides a simple approach to comprehending how that link is revealed in nature and the arts. 
many ancient people felt that numbers had symbolic significance beyond their everyday utility. Various forms, including triangles, octagons and hexagons, are believed to be physical manifestations of numbers. Sacred geometry has frequently influenced the design of sacred structures and sacred art. However, Terence Howard said that he had made some personal discoveries using the science that Pythagoras was seeking for, and that he was able to correctly open up the flower of life and uncover the genuine wave conjugations that we'd been hunting for for 10,000 years. History tells us that many great minds pondered the importance of the flower of life. Leonardo da Vinci, an Italian polymath of the High Renaissance, was also interested in the flower of life. He worked as a painter, draftsman, engineer, scientist, theorist, sculptor, and architect. Leonardo da Vinci is well known for his thorough research on the flower of life. Da Vinci's drawings demonstrate his preoccupation with geometric perfection and the ability to uncover the secrets of the world. Da Vinci examined the flower of life to discover more about its mathematical features and how it related to physical reality and consciousness. He was recognized for using the golden ratio of phi in his artwork, commonly known as the Fibonacci spiral, which centers on the flower of life pattern. Now, what da Vinci and everyone else wanted to do was find a means to bring this flower to life because, reportedly, there were secrets inside it. But they were fooled into thinking it was a straight line because many believe that there's straight lines in the universe. So, the question is, how does all energy in the universe express itself? It is in motion. And if something is motionless, there is no energy. Kinetic, right? What does all motion express? Also, are galaxies expressed in straight lines? No, they are expressed as vortices, which is also known as waves. And as you know, every wave is bent. You see, there are no straight lines in anything. That has been the mistake. We've been focusing on these straight lines, this Euclidean style of thinking, while overlooking nature's curve. Similarly, in his effort to explain gravitational force and cosmic physics, Sir Isaac Newton looked to old wisdom and symbols, such as the flower of life. It is argued that Newton's famous discovery of gravity was part of a bigger effort to solve the cosmic mystery encoded in ancient symbols. Terence Howard's captivating discourse on the flower of life not only takes us to a realm of ancient secrets, but also prompts a fundamental rethinking of geometric understanding. His arguments, far from being mere speculation, have relevance in a variety of historical, scientific, and philosophical settings. Pythagoras, the Greek mathematician, also explored these mystical regions, using geometric concepts to comprehend musical harmonies and the construction of the cosmos. However, Howard masterfully emphasizes the difficulty these great minds faced. They were confined to two-dimensional viewpoints. Despite their brilliance, they struggled with the symbol's depth, unable to move beyond its planar representation. This is where Terence Howard's critique of standard Euclidean geometry opens up new possibilities for understanding. Euclidean geometry, which supports most of our mathematical and scientific understanding, focuses on flat, two-dimensional planes. However, as Howard so eloquently points out, the world is not limited to flatness. It is a swirl of curves, waves, and multi-dimensional shapes. Thus, the flower of life serves as a portal to understanding nature's curve. When we look at galaxies' spirals or the beautiful patterns on a nautilus shell, we observe curves rather than straight lines. This insight has far-reaching consequences, implying that the world functions in flat and linear realms. It also functions in dimensions that our predecessors may have attempted to express through symbols such as the flower of life. Terence Howard's argument corresponds with present scientific knowledge of the cosmos, notably curved space-time, an important idea in Einstein's theory of relativity. This echoes ancient wisdom as the curvature of space and time around huge objects such as stars and galaxies is visible, not speculative. The curving of light around enormous objects known as gravitational lensing reveals the universe's curved shape. Furthermore, 
Howard's ideas have analogies in the field of quantum theory. The elusive character of basic particles, their presence in probabilities rather than fixed places, is consistent with the concept of a world beyond straight lines and predictable paths. This is where Howard's hypothesis about discovering anything in the depths gets very interesting. The vacuum, commonly called empty space, may be teeming with these basic particles, invisible threads that weave the fabric of the cosmos. Then, the flower of life represents the universe's deepest mysteries. Howard highlights his 45-year search for the structure of the cosmos, indicating that the scientific world is rejecting the mainstream model, which includes black holes and dark matter in favour of an electric model of the universe. There is a ton of documentation of da Vinci working on the flower of life and attempting to unravel it. But in every single instance, you see him making straight lines and trying to bend these straight lines in. As a result, he couldn't open it up because the entire universe and all space is curved. Curved space is the shortest distance between two locations since you cannot force your way straight through it. Even electricity, when it flows from a southern to a northern plane, always travels northeast, but magnetism extends toward the southwest. That's the spin, and you can always tell whether it's magnetism or electricity. Is it northeast or southwest? However, by attempting to identify the gaps, you will realize that everything we have been interacting with in between are these pedals. All of humanity has dealt with these pedals, but the other forms that we've always disregarded were in between spaces. They were the objects that filled the vacuum of space, and we believe that all the particles are proof of that. It is also the definitive demonstration of the wave particle argument. Building on Terence Howard's deep insights into energy and motion, we go on a quest to discover the universe's hidden language. It is not a language expressed in straight lines, but in dynamic patterns and never-ending movement. This inquiry takes us into the realms of current physics, where energy and motion are seen as a complicated interaction of forces and fields rather than linear paths. At the center of our investigation is the fundamental premise that all energy in the cosmos is in constant motion. Instead of straight lines, this motion takes the form of vortices, waves, and spirals. Modern physics, with its study of galaxies and celestial bodies, supports this viewpoint. Galaxies do not form straight paths, but rather spinning spirals and elliptical orbits, a pattern similar to the structure of the DNA helix and Hurricanes' spinning arms. Terence Howard's point of view is quite similar to this one, implying a global pattern of motion and energy that is curved and cyclical. The wave-particle duality in quantum physics, which describes particles as discrete entities and probabilistic waves, exemplifies this shift away from linear thinking. This questions our conventional notion of motion and trajectory. It argues that at its most fundamental level, the cosmos manifests itself in probabilities and patterns that determine clear classification. Moving from complex structure to microscopic, we explore nature's curves in search of the universe's essence. Let's talk about Howard's emphasis on curved, non-linear geometry that is reflected in the natural world. Curves and spirals may be found everywhere in nature, from the vast expanse of rivers to the delicate curl of a fern frond. These patterns are not random. Instead, they follow mathematical concepts such as fractal geometry and the Fibonacci sequence. Fractal geometry, with its self-repeating patterns, provides insight into nature's limitless complexity. Tree branching, snowflake structure, and the craggy outlines of mountain ranges all exhibit these fractals. The Fibonacci sequence, another mathematical pattern, may be seen in the arrangement of seeds in a sunflower, the spirals of a snail's shell, and the proportions of the human body. These patterns show a secret order in nature, one that goes beyond the straight lines of Euclidean geometry. Howard's views on the absence of straight lines in nature are consistent with these discoveries. Recognizing the curved and cyclical patterns that govern the natural world helps us understand the nature of the cosmos. 
These patterns represent deeper fundamental laws that control the formation, structure and movement of everything in the universe. Terence Howard's brilliant views introduces us to a fascinating facet of this underlying order, the mathematical cycles. This interesting theory, as demonstrated by the looping behaviour of the square root of 2, illustrates an unexpected and seemingly odd aspect of mathematical processes. However, there is time for all of these wave conjugations, states of matter, and other things to change. Now, all our buildings are aerodynamic. Although our airplanes are no longer built on a two-dimensional Euclidean way of living, our math remains two-dimensional, and it is best to evaluate this before we continue. Do you know anything about loops in math? Do you believe that the square root of 2 equals the square root of 2? Bring your phones out for a minute while we make some calculations. Then, open the calculator and place the phone on landscape mode so you can see all the lengthy digits. Now, input square root and 2. The result should be 1.414213562373395, right? Cube the result by doing x to the power of 3. It will be 2.824271217461190. Now it makes sense. After that, divide it by 2. Cube that number again, divide it by 2, and repeat till the end of your life. And that number will still equal 2.82847217461190. Any other number that you start with above 2, and then cube and square, cube and square, and divide by 2 through the 6 operations would result in an exponential number that you cannot even understand. Any number less than 2 that you do the same process with will result in an increasingly small number. This is what we term a loop. It is illogical, makes no sense, and does not make math clear. So, these are some of the issues Terence Howard raised and examined. He conducted an audit on math, the universe of mathematics, and how we interpret platonic solids because he believes the new wave conjugations will give a better tale about how our world works. Terence Howard's speech takes an unusual turn when he discusses mathematical loops, questioning our traditional understanding of mathematics and its applications in the real world. His example with the square root of 2 pushes us to examine the fundamental concepts of mathematics that we frequently take for granted. Howard's request to audit the arithmetic is an invitation to go on a voyage of discovery and re-evaluation of the basic fabric of mathematical thinking. Howard's example shows an intriguing loop involving the square root of 2. By repeatedly cubing and dividing the result by 2, we arrive at the following constant value, 2.82842712174619. This phenomenon, as Howard points out, breaches our expectations of mathematical procedures, which we expect to change or progress rather than loop. The loop indicates a deeper, maybe basic component of mathematical reality that has been neglected or misinterpreted in standard Euclidean mathematics. Howard's investigation into these loops suggests that our understanding of mathematics and its connection to the real world may be limited or even wrong. He argues that mathematics may need to change in the same way that we have modified our structures to be more aerodynamic and have moved away from two-dimensional designs in buildings and airplanes. This development would include accepting notions that may appear irrational or counterintuitive, such as mathematical loops and incorporating them into our knowledge of the cosmos. The importance of Howard's request to reconsider the platonic solids and their role in explaining the world cannot be underestimated. The tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron and icosahedron are fundamental to classical geometry and philosophy, representing fire, earth, air, water and the universe. However, Howard contends that there may be more to these forms than meets the eye, particularly when examined through the perspective of wave conjugations and mathematical loops. This viewpoint is consistent with the growing area of quantum geometry, in which the classical laws of Euclidean geometry 
give way to a more dynamic and sophisticated understanding of forms and structures at the quantum scale. In this realm, the behavior of particles and forces cannot be fully explained by straight lines and flat planes. Instead, they exhibit behaviors that are better understood using concepts. This is Howard's mathematical loop, in which values loop back on themselves in ways that defy our conventional understanding. Howard's challenge to the world of mathematics is a philosophical and scientific statement. It asks for a rethinking of the underlying concepts that guide our perception of reality. By calling into doubt the validity and completeness of present mathematical methodologies, Howard advocates for a paradigm shift that will lead to a more comprehensive and accurate knowledge of the cosmos. In essence, Terence Howard's speech serves as a starting point for a larger discussion regarding the nature of reality, mathematics, and our view of the cosmos. His discoveries on mathematical loops and the square root of two open the door to investigating the cosmos in ways that defy conventional bounds. They urge us to examine the idea that the cosmos is far more complicated and connected than we previously thought. Subsequently, we may discover that the solutions to some of the universe's most profound secrets lay not in the straight lines and flat planes of the past, but in the loops, curves, and multi-dimensional spaces of a new mathematical knowledge. As we wrap up this extraordinary adventure, it's evident that Terence Howard may be a genius in his own right. His thoughts have opened our eyes to possibilities we never considered, forcing us to think deeper and go beyond the apparent. Seeing him in this new light as a visionary thinker gives us hope. It implies that mankind, with its boundless curiosity and ability for comprehension, is on the verge of making fresh revolutionary discoveries. Terence's enthusiasm and brilliance remind us that every one of us has the power to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos, stretching the limits of what we think is possible. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.